I just did a video talking about, I've had to compose myself and get myself together again, but about dad jumping in the fire hole and leaving me out and all the efforts. This really didn't stop until he died. He, um, he you know, Sam, just so everyone understands the relationship I've had with Sam, Sam's a paid for carer from the government he spends eight hours a day with me, five days a week, and helps me with everything. Help, you know, and but any day, like Sam, Saturdays and Sundays, Sam doesn't work. Dad had arrived here at the door 6 a.m. and spend four hours with me every Saturday and every Sunday, four hours or so. He kept here at six, make me a cup of tea in the Mickey Mouse coffee cup <laughs> that he every day he goes, here's a cup of tea in your Mickey Duck coffee cup. <laughs> he's got to scrap jokes with everything. And he'd do my washing and washing up and make me breakfast, take me for a drive. That's why we've got all these videos of dad driving with me and telling, I started filming him telling me his stories. You know, one of those Saturday drives is when we went and drove and had a look at the Divinals house where Chrissy Amphlett, the lead singer of the Divinals, lived with the guitarist of the Divinals, Mark, for a number of years. And I think that a lot of the Divinals rehearsals and songwriting used to go on at that house and whatever. Um, uh, and all those trips to Woodford and Mullaney that we filmed and everything, that, that's because Dad was coming out on the weekends to spend time with me because I don't know anyone else. And... Uh, so if Sam was sick for a week, Dad would come out every morning for the whole week. 6 a.m. So what he does on those days, once again, gets up early, walks Archie, and drove over here and, and made sure I'm okay. So he not only spent that two or three years or what it was, bringing me right back from the dead, he has maintained helping me f for whatever, it's, it could be 10 straight years now, I don't know. But even this house that I live in, Dad chose it. Dad bought it for me. I live in a four-bedroom fucking house. My father bought it for me. You know what? For years, I wouldn't accept it. I said, I can't do that. It's taking advantage of my parents. I'm not doing that. Uh, I'll, I'll find some way to find somewhere to live and all that stuff. But eventually the psych, Stephen Height, he just said to me, you, you, you and, and other guys said it as well. I said, your father has, has, you know, put himself in a financial position where he can do this for you. And um, parents like to do things for their children. Like, and, and when you won't accept it, you're, you're not allowing this guy to do what he wants to do for you. And what, so I, I said, okay, and dad picked this house that I live in. And that's how we found Biwa. He was taking me for weekend drives when I was living at their place. And we found, kept going around and we just found that we kept coming back to Biwa in this neck of the woods on these drives that dad was doing to to help me with meltdowns and and all this. Um, and then we saw this house for sale and dad, like it doesn't have a back neighbor. It doesn't have a front neighbor. It doesn't have a neighbor to the left. And on the right, there's a neighbor that really loves his privacy. He's got a seven foot fence between the two properties. And I never hear from anyone. And the, the property is a big one. I've got a great big backyard and the house is huge with high ceilings and all that. Dad just, just knew that this is a place that no matter how hard life is outside, that that on this block of land and within this house, I'd be secure, safe and have a sanctuary. And he's right, it's, it's been like that. He picked the exact right house and, you know, he, he's a smart guy. He, he, he considered everything. Even what's interesting is this house that I live in was, that we call Beer Heights Manor, uh, this, this house was um, the the one that people... The, I'm on an estate here in Beewer and 
everyone used to walk through this house um, and uh, you know to see how good life could be here and then they'd pick a plan and get a house built but this is the one they walked through to decide whether they wanted to live here or not and so when we got the house inspected by builders you know this house has been built absolutely brilliantly you know uh, no shortcuts anything like that you know for that reason they uh, you know, and uh, you know all the builders, inspectors, and all that that came through. They said to Dad, "Man, this house, you're just sitting on a gold mine. It's just, it's wonderful. It's just been built so well, you know, and all this." So, um, anyway, we like I said, Dad and I were just driving, and we said, "Let's do some back streets," for whatever reason. And then he saw this house, and he he uh, just said, "Richard, I, I'm getting that house for you. That's that's." where you'll be safe and whatever, and we'll be able to build a life and, and turn that into a sanctuary for you. And that's what he's been doing. I've been living here, uh, I think this is my third Christmas here, I think, this year. And uh, Dad has helped me build that over three years, the whole thing here. I'm spending time here and showing me all the great things about the place. I mean, even even just before Dad died, the water pressure wasn't great in the shower and all that. He just chased it up and chased it up. Now brilliant water pressure, he got the plumber to come. Dad even dug the hole out the front for the plumbers, I believe, with a shovel so they could get down to uh, the, the, I don't know, the pipes or whatever that, that had that control the water pressure. Because down the front, you've got, I don't know, what is a meter or a pump or something, whatever, that brings the water to your house and down there uh, versus the water pressure down there versus the water pressure. Once you actually got to the house at the top of the property, there was, it was massively low up at the house. So they had to put in a new pipe or unblock something or whatever it was that required digging and dad did it with a shovel. Dad pruned all the trees out the back and everything, and it, you know, it took him hours with a with a handsaw. <laughs> yeah, no, Dad, what a legend.